Today's episode of All Facts No Cap, we got Los Angeles Chargers running back Austin Eckler. Austin, what's going on with you, man? I don't know. How's it going, man? What's going on? It's all good, man. Hey, uh, big win, obviously, on Sunday against the Washington football team. Had a touchdown, pretty good game. You and the rest of the offensive players uh, and the defense as well. Go ahead and talk to me about the importance of starting off the season on a positive note and also what it's like being that West Coast team traveling to the East Coast when essentially you got a kickoff at 10 a.m. your time. Right, yeah, it's always good uh, to start out with a, a win, especially on the road. Um, and why you say that? Because that, that's what we have to build off of, right? You know, every every team just had their first game, and so that's the first time that team's been on the field together in the regular season, and so that's where you build off of from there. Um, so if you can start out on a, on a high note, uh, it's a great starting point to start building. And, yeah, as far as traveling to the East Coast, um, I'm never a fan of it just because, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm not a morning person. Um, but, you know, sometimes, you know, you got to do stuff you don't like to do, which is all good. Uh, so got to get up a little bit earlier, which is what we have to do, travel over to East Coast and get a game in. Uh, no one else cares if we're tired or not. You know, they just care about how we play on Sunday. So that's what it comes down to, just <laughs> prepping throughout the week, getting up a little bit earlier, get acclimated. Trust me, I get it. I remember from all my years playing in Oakland, man, like those East Coast trips were always detrimental just because kickoff is basically 10 o'clock your time. And half the time I'm kind of like you, I'm not necessarily a morning person and you got to get up for a game, not, you know, practice, not training camp, something like that, like getting up for a game. Oh, right. uh, man, trust me. I, I remember those days uh, against mm -hmm. the Jets or the Steelers or the Ravens or something like that. Uh, trust me, it's definitely hectic. So right. uh, congrats on uh, getting that, pulling out that W. I appreciate it, man. Okay. Now, talk to me about the 2020 Offensive Rookie of the Year, Justin uh -huh. Herbert. Go ahead and finish this sentence for me because he had another good game Ooh, on Sunday, okay. and we know he's going to we know he's gonna play great this year. Justin Herbert is. Ooh. <laughs> Justin Herbert <laughs> is. Mm. I'm going to say make a run for league MVP. Mm, I I'm like say that. Gonna make a run. Right? I like that. Right. Um, you know, especially just what we built around him. Uh, I say we, but what the Chargers have built around Justin Herbert, as far as bringing in a new offensive line, putting a lot of money up front, um, and then some of our receivers and you know tight ends that we have now. Uh, obviously, the backfield as well. We're going to hold it down for him, but uh, the protection that he has and the weapons that he has to throw to on the outside, I think, uh, is a special combination that you don't get very often. You know, I, I think it's because look, we just drafted a drafted him, so we have a cheaper, right? Cheaper in the sense of the mm -hmm. NFL uh, quarterback. Um, you know, when he gets to his end of his contract, he'll be one of those guys. Where, hey, now they're taking a lot of your cap space. Um, but right now we get them a little cheaper so we can spend spread money around everywhere else. Right. So there's a business side to, to the NFL, too. We're in one of those, those situations where we're able to spread a lot of love to other other positions, but still have a really good quarterback. So it's a unique time. I'm really excited for us this year. <clears throat> Speaking of the great players that he has around him. I remember back uh, early part of training camp, Coach Brandon Stanley came out, mentioned you among several other players that would not be playing in the preseason. Talk to me your thoughts on players not playing in the preseason as far as how hard is it, or should I say how quickly can you get reacclimated to the game once the regular season starts not having those preseason reps? Right. Yeah. I mean, it was kind of like the first time for me, I guess, besides last year, last year we didn't have preseason in general. Um, but it was, it was a little, I was a little skeptical to be honest. Like, hmm, like, you know, I wouldn't mind a drive, you know, just one drive <laughs> to go out there and get hit real, like really get hit, you know, be able to feel kind of the bumps that you don't usually feel in practice. Um, you know, we had a, a joint practice versus the uh, San Francisco uh -huh. and coach made it a point like, Hey, this is your guys' game. Like this is your, as close to a game as you're going to get, you know, in the preseason to get to the regular season. Um, so, you know, we treated every single day, especially during the joint practice, like, okay, this is, this is my game reps right now. Cause I'm going to be sitting out, um, on Saturday when the preseason games were. And so when it came to the real game it was all right, you know, I've been preparing, you know, it's definitely going to be different because now I'm actually getting tapped to the ground for once. Um, I was definitely getting tapped to the ground in San Fran too, during that practice. Cause that's how those practices go. Oh, I remember. Um, oh yeah. You know, you know how it is. It gets, <laughs> it gets chippy out there for sure. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, <laughs> and it only takes one play, man. It takes one play. And that's then all, all of a sudden all now takes. it's live. Now it's live. Um, but yeah, so I feel like, you know, 
I, like, I was skeptical at first, but actually getting into rhythm, going out there just with the mindset, of, hey, I've been doing this for a long time now. Um, kind of remember how the game is, but you never really get the actual reps until you really get out there. And so I was glad we can start out on the on a fast pace with it. Yeah, as speaking of those chippy practices uh, in training camp, whenever you're practicing against another team, it it's all it always seems to start most likely like on special teams. Right. You know, when guys are fighting for a job, let's say, <laughs> right. you know, the, the gunner or the shields or something like that. And then it spills over into offense defense. And one thing that I always we always made sure in Oakland, whether we're practicing against the 49ers, the Texans or whoever is especially for a DB, because obviously running backs, you guys run hard. And the one thing that you don't want to do in a, in a in a joint practice is you don't want to be the guy who's not going hard enough. So the running backs mm -hmm. come through the hole and you go ahead, you just thud him up, you're tagging off. But if that running back lowers his shoulder, oh, yeah. <laughs> now like you get ran over, now you get embarrassed, things like that. Right. So now, now it becomes just basically like a, a full on game where now you're going mm -hmm. for the running back's knees. Are you trying to tackle him the way you would in a game? So right. man, I remember you <laughs> never wanted to be the guy <laughs> who wasn't right. going hard enough and for a running back. If you come right. through the hole and you're just expecting the guys to go ahead and tag you off and one of them goes ahead and blasts you real quick. Yeah. Well, now the next time you okay. come in. Okay, I'm coming through. Exactly, yeah, you know, yeah. you, you running behind your pads, yeah. all this yeah. and the other. So man, all it takes is like you just said, like that one play and then all of a sudden it's no longer a practice. Like now it's like a full on divisional game, right. like against one of your opponents. So uh yeah, it's no, fun because that's that's the tempo going to the game, right? Both sides are like, hey, we're setting the tempo today, you know, set yep. the tempo. You know, people are out there, you know, set the tempo, you know. And so if both teams are trying to do that, yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> it's it's a lot. <laughs> okay. Now talk to me. You guys got Mike Williams. You got one of my favorite receivers in the league. You got Keenan Allen. Got yourself. You got a bevy of, of players on the offensive side of the ball. And also Derwin James is back on the defense side of the ball, which I think is going to be very big for you guys. You got Bosa. So you got so many players all the way down the list. One of the best rosters top to bottom, in my opinion, in the league. What is the ceiling for this team, not only in the AFC West, but just around the league? I don't think we even know yet. We played one game. Um, you know, we still have a lot to prove to ourselves as an organization, especially with new coaching staff, right? Can we do this week in and week out? Um, how are how do our game plans adjust according to who we're playing? Um, so I think that's something that will prove to ourselves what our ceiling is, but we know it's got to be pretty high because we have the Kansas City Chiefs, so we gotta play twice a year. Yep. Right. And we already know <laughs> we already know where they're at. You know, yep. they're above everyone right now as far as what they've done in the past and how they're able to, you know, retain these players and keep them on their team. So um, we're in a, in a situation where our ceiling has got to be up there, you know, and I think we have the guys to do it, but, you know, thinking about it and having hype around it is one thing and actually going out and do it, you know, doing it is another. And so that's what we're set out to do. You know, you know how it is. You got to take it week by week. Yep. Um, because any given Sunday, you might have blown the team out last week, but this week, you know, it's a new week, you know, you're playing a new, new opponent. Um, I've been on teams where we're doing well the next week, all of a sudden now we get blown out. Like what yeah. the heck just happened? Like you got to show up to play. Um, this is a league where, Hey, if, if you have a bad day, you're going to get punished for it. So, um, you know, I can't really say, I can't really say, you know, I can say we have a lot of potential, um, but it's all potential until we actually go out there and play on Sunday. Absolutely. Speaking of coaching staff, talk to me about if there's any differences between Brandon Staley and Anthony Lynn as far as their approach to the game, how they interact with the players, anything like that, if there's any differences at all. Yeah, uh, there's definitely a difference. Um, Coach Coach Lynn was, I feel like, more just professional in his relationship with players, uh, which is not good or bad. That's just how his take was to it. And I feel like uh, Coach Staley is more of like, hey, let's let's talk like about personal stuff kind of thing, like more just a personal guy. Uh, when it comes to just talking with players um, at the end of the day, none of that matters. What matters is, Hey, how do you coach on Sundays? You yep. get the job done. Are we winning games? Uh, but as far as the coaching styles, I would say that was like the biggest difference that I see um, as far as just approachability um, It's just different for both of them. Uh, one more, just like, Hey, we're here for business. This is mindset. Um, other like, Hey, let's hang out a little bit. Let me get to know you a little bit more um, even just during the week. All right. You guys are no longer the San Diego Chargers. You're now the Los Angeles Chargers. You're in a city that's got pretty much two of everything. You got the Lakers, Clippers, you got the Dodgers, you got the Angels, you got you, the, you guys, the Chargers, and the Los Angeles Rams. 
how can the Chargers become the premier team in LA? And I say this because you got the LA Rams. They just picked up Stafford, all of that. They got all the hoopla, the new stadium, Inglewood, all of that. But when you look at the Lakers and the Clippers, the Lakers got 17 world titles. Clippers have mm. none. The Rams haven't won anything of recent. So talk to me about what it would take for the Chargers to become the premier team in Los Angeles and not it automatically being given to the Rams. Right. I, f- well, I feel like we could do it this year. We could do it in one year because um, this year is a very unique year. Uh, for those of you that don't know, the Super Bowl is at SoFi Stadium, yes. which is in L.A., yes. right? Yes. So we could do it. I feel like we could do what might take years in one year. You know, if we're able to get to that that final game mm-hmm. uh, and play in our own stadium, right, at home in SoFi Stadium, where it's going to draw from all, all over the region, right, and build <laughs> this fan base. Oh, yeah. Um, so it's a unique opportunity for us and the Rams, too, right? They play in the same stadium. So it's a unique opportunity for both of us. Um, otherwise, hey, if we don't make it, it's going to be it's going to come down to, hey, OK, are we playing? Are we exciting? Are we winning games? And it's going to take years and years and years. Um, but it's just very unique because the championship game is in our home stadium, which is going to draw a lot of attention to that, obviously, oh, yeah. when that time comes, regardless of who's playing in it. You know, the area is going to be well known as far as like what's of what's going on. Um, so, yeah, I think, hey, man, we can do it. Let's say it's one <laughs> game at a time. You know how it is. But, hey, this is the year to do it. If we're ever going to do it. Hey, man, I love the confidence. man. I, I love to hear that yeah. because it, but first, before you do it, you first got to believe it, because if you don't believe it, nobody else will. So, man, I love that. OK, now talk to me about Eckler's Edge. Yeah, Eckler's Edge, man. So the fantasy world, I didn't realize how big it was um until i really started you know just getting into the league a, co- a few years and people kept hitting me up um as far as hey man thanks for scoring me points on fantasy all this stuff mm-hmm. and so i really started looking to it and started seeing that there's a multi-billion dollar industry and a huge yep. community around this and i was i always like to give back just because i know I've, I've come from um so i like to give my energy back because people actually care about watching me play football which i think is amazing Um, It's given me this life that I've lived today. And I'm like, I want to say thank you to these people. And so the fantasy people, the fantasy community, I should say, is a big part of what makes the culture of the NFL so popular. Um, And so I have started uh, Eckler's Edge with Yahoo Sports, uh, where we talk a little bit about fantasy football. I give my insight on, you know, key players, things happening, um, just going forward. And, you know, I have my own fantasy teams, too, that I play for fun. Uh, So it's just another way for me to give some 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 type of some part of me back, I should say. Nice. (laughs) Oh, man, I think that uh, I think that's great. And that's something that I didn't learn until I really until I stopped playing how deep that fantasy stuff really, really goes. Like I bump into people at the gym and they'll ask me, "Uh, Stan, who should I start on my fantasy roster this week? And I'm like, "Uh, dude, I I have no idea. (laughs) So, like, yeah, that fantasy, man, it it runs deep for a lot of Mm -hmm. fans and it's a way for them to feel more connected. Like they really have kind of like some sort of some sort of ownership or just, you know, some sort of uh, some sort of part in all of this. Speaking of giving back. You also do your jersey giveaway. Tell me about that. Right, right. Yeah, I, I kind of have like a collective as far as during the season. I have my jersey giveaway, and then I also have uh, my foundation as well. Um, that kind of tie into just this community aspect. Uh, we're really trying to give back with the jersey giveaways. It's like, hey, I just want to create some type of fun interactive because I know a lot of people have me on their teams already. It's like, hey, if you have me on your team, guess what? If you win your game take a screenshot of it, tag me in it. I'll send some random lucky person uh, a signed jersey from me. Um, so I'm doing nice. that every single week and then tying that in with the foundation. Started our own, started our own. The foundation started this league um, uh, to help uh, just people that, not even people, to help uh, football organizations and clubs that are financially struggling to provide equipment for them. So all trying to tie all of this just community of football in to help honestly just help other people um so that's why all of, i do echo's edge that's why i do the jersey giveaways that's why i do the uh, stuff with the foundation um and it all just ties in to me saying thank you and i appreciate all of you um and you know hopefully i can keep scoring you guys some points at fancy football. <laughs> <laughs> say <at> fancy football <laughs> <laughs> love it all right hey i'm gonna go ahead and get you up out of here i got a few rapid questions go ahead just right, say the first got? thing that pops into your mind let's do it best stadium to play in not so named SoFi. Not, oh, not named SoFi. Man, I was going to say, we just went to Washington and we were in their stadium. Like, man, 
it just makes SoFi look so much better just being in some of these older stadiums, man. <laughs> it's just that good. It's not that Washington has a terrible mm-hmm. stadium. There's it's a solid stadium, but SoFi is just that legit. Um, but I would say KC, um, just for the for the community aspect. They're oh, those guys go crazy over there. So fun yes. playing, a lot of energy. That, that was a good one. That was a good one. One of my favorite places to play back oh, back when in my days. Mm-hmm. Okay, now let me ask this: favorite team growing up? I didn't watch the NFL until my junior year of college. Really? Didn't watch any sports. Learn yeah. something new yeah, every I... day. <laughs> Learn. Okay. That, that, that's interesting. That's interesting. Okay, moving on. Is a hamburger a sandwich? Yes. Why? Because there's two pieces of bread <laughs> and then you have contents in between. <laughs> that's what a sandwich is. <laughs> okay, now, last one. All right. Last one. Now, favorite player when you started watching back in college favorite player if you had one i didn't really have a favorite player um, i had a lot of people that compared me to people like oh you're similar to danny woodhead like all these all the small running backs right that's why mm-hmm. i just i'm five eight so they just threw me in oh you, you're compared to all the small running back which i was like ah okay like sure like it proved to me that you know you, you can be small in stature and still make it in the nfl that's mm-hmm. really what i got out of it but i didn't really have a true person that I watched growing up. Yeah. I just, I don't know. My family just wasn't big in the NFL. Um, and then I started getting looks at him and I was like, oh, let me, I'm looking at this thing a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> and now look at you, man. Uh, I love what you're doing. Keep doing it. Uh, I definitely will be watching you for the rest of the season, man. Much love to you chargers. I got a root. I'm a root for y'all every week, except when y'all play my Raiders. Uh, so I, I, you know, I got to represent that black and silver, <laughs> All good. Uh, man. Nonetheless, I appreciate you coming on Austin. Uh, definitely got to do this again. Much love yeah. to you and much respect awesome. and uh, good luck the rest of the way. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. All right. You be good.